Good morning, everyone. So today we're going to talk about something very exciting. Um, something that has been requested, a little bookcase tour. So as you can see, first off, I do have these two empty bookshelves. I have roommates moving in tomorrow, and since this is in the living room, in a common area, I wanted to make sure to have those two open. And all of these books that I have out here, I'm totally fine with other people using. I have my name email number and all of them. I do have a couple of books that I personally um, absolutely love, but do not necessarily want other people um, to use them. So I have those in a bin, which is actually just outside in my storage closet. Um, if you want a video talking about those books uh, another time, let me know and I can do that for you. Let's go ahead and go over here. Um, well, actually, first off, I just needed somewhere for this box. It says, follow your compass. I think it's so cute and a good message. That box is also kind of falling apart. Otherwise, I would have used it for some other type of storage. And then I do have one <laughs> VHS tape. This is Around the World with Siebert. I cannot even tell you guys how hard it was to find this. Um, I grew up watching this, absolutely loved it, so I got myself a copy. I'm pretty sure I got it off eBay. It is, it used to be a library copy from somewhere, but very, very excited to have that, so I just keep that up there. Um, I do have all of my movies, and then, let's see if I can do this. I should have practiced. <laughs> um... So I have all my movies here and they are alphabetically in order. And then back here, um, I have a couple more movies that I don't watch as often, like Where the Heart Is, William and Kate, but then I have like the entire series of The Office. So that's where I keep all of my different series. Um, and if there are um, like movie series, then I keep them back of there as well. If I have at least two movies within the series, like with Catching Fire, I only have the one. So I just let that set out on its own. All right, so that is that. Um, and then, so this is nonfiction. And then down here is mostly fiction. I think down here I might have a couple that are nonfiction. Um, but as you can tell, this is a very, very full shelf. And I just put this candle here so that this didn't look so empty. Um, so I won't necessarily go through and talk about all of these, but I'll just kind of show you what is here. So I've got this cute little bear hugs book, thinking I'll probably send this to my mom, um, gift it to my mom sometime. <laughs> I do have a couple of different dictionaries in Merriam-Webster and then the Oxford American. And let's see, I've got a couple of pamphlets about families and temples. If you don't know, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So these are written and produced by the church. Absolutely love this. If you have any questions about that, let me know. And then I've also got a couple of more like textbooky uh, type things, like the elements of style. This is all about writing. I'm creative writing majors, so I like to keep these things around. Um, Think by Blackburn. This is a philosophy book. Quick study algebra. I have one more algebra um, class to take before I graduate, so very excited for that. This is a great resource. Crash course for the GRE and the GMAT. Um, I eventually want to go to graduate school, so having both of these to help me prepare for those tests is great. Couple more books, um, couple of spark notes. A lot of these things I actually have picked up discarded from my university's library where I work. So there's lots of cool things, how to improve student learning, and then of course a couple of great books by people that have like really inspiring stories and just really help to Open my eyes. So Elizabeth Smart, Al Caraway. Um, this is a really good resource 
especially, you know, with Black Lives Matters and everything that's going on right now, helping us to have a deeper understanding, like it says, a deeper understanding of cultural diversity. This is really great. It looks like a textbook, but it doesn't read like a textbook necessarily. Over here, I've just got some history stuff. Like this is Iolani Palace in Honolulu, Hawaii. And then a couple of other things such as crafting the constitution, people and the environment, that type of thing. Um, and then Pearl Harbor. And then I've got a couple copies of my book, Out of Her Mind. A uh, couple more things, Why Not Today? by a local singer, Eric Dodge. I met him, I think my first week. Actually, it might've even been like the second day um, that I was here in St. George. Early Homecoming talks about early return missionaries, Other Side of Heaven. This is super cool. The Art of Watching Films. This is a textbook that, textbook that had been used in some of the uni classes. I haven't, obviously haven't read through all of it because that's not within my major, but I found it and thought that would be really interesting. The Allen and Bacon Guide to Writing. I use this for my English 2010 class, my very first semester here. It's a great resource um, if anyone needs any writing help or just has questions about like MLA, APA formatting. I highly suggest just this. It's really inexpensive. This is um, the concise edition. It is a little bit older, but it's a really great resource. A lot of great information. I'm pretty sure I'll be holding on to this probably for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, some more history type things. Lies my teachers told me. She experienced hidden life. This is pretty cool. This is a comic book all about climate change. I got to hear this guy speak and it was amazing. <laughs> uh, social history of England speech in Tuscany. I love books like this where they like coffee books where they have lots of very nice pictures and drawings and then they talk about some type of kind of like historical thing. Um, very much my jam. I would love to do something like that one day. <laughs> and I've got some teaching materials, teaching and assessment resources, themes. Um, although I am not getting my degree in education or planning to get a teaching certificate anytime soon. That is something that I am very open to learning more about. This is really cool. This is an older edition of the Southern Quill, A Dream Within a Dream. Um, actually, when we get down here, I'll kind of talk more about the Southern Quill because I have a couple of those editions down here as well. Got an atlas. This is awesome. My college used to have a yearbook, so I got the edition from the year that I was born. They used to be the Confederates. Um, we are now the Trailblazers, which is like a bison. But that's super fun. Let's see what else. So down here, we have Anne Frank, Diary of a Young Girl. Everyone should read that and know her story. <laughs> uh, Romeo and Julio. This is kind of, you know, like a Romeo and Juliet, but from a different culture. I actually haven't read this one. It was required reading for a children's literature class I was enrolled in this past semester, but I ended up dropping because I didn't meet the credits for that class. It was just an elective, but I kept the book. Let's see. Midsummer Night's Dream, Pygmalion, uh, The Two Gentlemen of Verona. So uh, one cool thing about a lot of these books, um, and then this one over here, Much Ado About Nothing, these, kind of like I mentioned before, are discarded items from my university library, and they're actually a former professor. He passed away, um, I think it was last spring. So that was pretty cool that I'm able to kind of take on part of his legacy. <laughs> I've got Pride and Prejudice, of course, um, from the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler, Northanger Abbey. I do have a couple of children's books mixed in. My World of Class, I know the author of this, so that's pretty cool. Where the Heart Is, They Called Her Mrs. Dog, Calling of Emily Evans, Once Upon a Summer, 